So can you help us, Akshay, to kind of quantify what is the size of the population that is affected by this type of income? In the world, there are about 2 billion people who are underserved. Uh, and they are underserved because of one reason, income bias. Either their income is different, it's not of a certain size, or their income does not come uh, in, a, in a particular frequency, or their income does not have a paycheck. A, a lot of them don't get a bank account. If they need something else, like if they need a small dollar credit, or if they need loans, uh, or if they need some kind of financial help, it is very, very challenging. And we came up with this concept where the affluent and the underserved can come on a single platform and help each other out. Based on these two concepts, we created a common stack of banking and financial services. I think something that in a way it's surprising because in the, you know, in the imagination of people, the U.S. is uh, rich, advanced, wealthy and uh, happy uh, country. So uh, finding out that the hundred million people are in a precarious uh, financial situation, it's, uh, it's kind of surprising for uh, even us that live here and for the rest of the world. If that is the situation, how is Common Bank going to help this uh, population? We really put ourselves in the shoes of our customers, experienced their lifestyle uh, and understood their challenges. And we built an algorithm that can underwrite credit for people with this kind of income. And we came up with this concept where the affluent and the underserved can come on a single platform and help each other out. Based on these two concepts, we created a common stack of banking and financial services. Common Bank is available on iOS and Android or will be available on iOS and Android. Uh, it's 100% it's through a mobile app. You get everything that you get from a traditional bank, checking account, savings account, physical debit card with chip and pin, no ATM fees, up to 50, there are about 50,000 ATMs where you can go and withdraw money, bank level security basically. In simple terms, why this is possible and instead normal banks cannot do that? Uh, because of the structures that they have put in place and the technologies that they have uh, uh, invested in and, and the time that they have uh, spent to do that, for them they're too big to change these mechanisms and they give a very small percentage of that back to the end user. That's why the interest rates are so low. In our case, we don't have to do any of those things. 100% of all the money, first of all, the only the money that you put in the community savings is used. That money only goes to help other people who are underserved. And these people have challenges every month. So they're coming, they're borrowing a small amount for a, for a, for a 30 day period, paying it back again coming back and taking help. This thing is getting cycled again and again and again. And it's going to a lot of people. We get to build our whole system on a serverless architecture that's easily scalable. So for all of these several reasons, our margins are pretty good. And we are, unlike the banks, we are not keeping a major portion of the margin. We are happy to give back that margin uh, to our customers. So let's, uh, let's switch gear here and, and look a little bit of the future. Where are we going five years from now? The way we look at this is today we're building a product. You know, we have a common stack of banking and financial services that is sitting on top of what we call the common financial network, which is a network of banks, not one single bank, but with a, part, a set of partner banks. We see that product evolving into a platform where we have half or more banks integrated into the common financial network and the common stack of banking and financial services sitting on top of it with open standardized APIs on top of our common stack where people can come and build really unique uh, solutions. So I'd like to ask you this, in the history of the, of the mind, there have been lots of technology that come out and uh, very often the, the reality is that they, they can be positive or negative depending on how the humans use them. But what do you think is really the balance right now of what we gain from AI and what we lose? I think uh, it's a path towards a better future. You know, the more data uh, that we have, the more quicker we can solve those problems and, and the better the world becomes. Just, just a very simple example. A lot of cars today, automatic braking comes almost standard. That was unheard of 
that is what technology does so what are the number of things of technological advancements that have made it possible today the amount of time and talent that uh, the time spent on data sciences and improving ai algorithms and up, uh, applying ai to practical uh, uh, to build practical solutions has gone up uh, exponentially and uh, the cost of technology is so dramatically reduced also i have to highlight that with millennials now there are 92 million millennials who are in the prime of their spending years the way they think the way they operate and the way they live their life has also increased the need for these kinds of services so it's it's a it's a ripple effect of all of these things put together